Hey guys, welcome back to the show. This is Out of Work Outdoors. My name is Connery, and due to popular demand, we've added another series to the Fishing Explained 2021 series of videos. Today we're going to be covering Fish Finder Electronics because we get so many questions about what do you think of this picture? What do you think of that picture? What do you think of this model? What do you think of that model? Is this one better than that? So we're going to try to put that all in a series. It's actually a very, very somewhat complicated uh, subject to talk about because it's very technical. There's not a lot of uh, hook sets here. There's going to be a lot of, you know, thinking. And there's a lot of money to be spent because depending on how in-depth, how advanced you want to go, you could be spending, say, 100 bucks, or you could be spending 10000 depends on how high you want to go. So... This video right now is basically I want to do an intro to electronics. It'll be dubbed 001 Intro to Electronics. Okay, so this video is aimed towards the guys that are thinking about getting a fish find for the first time. Okay, so so if you're one of those guys, man, you're gonna like this video. So I suggest you to uh, go and grab something to drink because it might be you know 10 minutes or so. If you don't have a cup. I decided to suggest you pick up one of ours. That's got a little striper on the back side, and we got the CNR on the front side. Well, this is this is a design by one of our own guys, uh, 47. He's kind of a pretty good uh, graphic artist. But anyways, grab your favorite drink and uh, come back and uh, sit back and get ready to absorb some knowledge. In the world of fish finders, fish finders are all basically audio players in a sense because we're dealing with ultrasonics. Ultrasonics is sound. Sound that your ear cannot hear because it's a lot higher. So we're talking anything between 50 kilohertz and higher is ultrasonic, especially when the speaker is placed in the underwater. The speaker is basically the transducer, this is what we call it in our world, the fishing world. So it sends the sound and it also uh, captures the sound, okay? But I wanted to stress this now before we go further because we need to understand frequencies and we need to understand which frequencies we're dealing with so that you can make an informed decision on which one you want to buy, okay? So if you're just trying to get a very, very entry-level unit, you're probably going to stick with this right here. We're in the 83, 83 and 200 right in this range, and if you're really going to stay in this range, it's called traditional 2D sonar, or 2D traditional sonar. They, they use this back and forth, they mix and match. But if you want to get something entry level or higher, then you're going to get this, and you'll get these frequencies up here. So what these frequencies do is, basically on the, on the low end, uh, we want range, we're not very... Uh, we're not very concerned about, you know, whether I can measure an inch or not. Over here is where you do. You want to you want to see the maximum details. So you're talking range on this end and maximum details on that end. So that's the spectrum of frequencies. And these are just frequencies that popped out of my head. You know, everybody, every manufacturer seems to have a number that's slightly different from this. But as a rule of thumb, that's something good to go with. So we got 83 and 200. Like I said, that's traditional two use owner. And then we got the higher numbers, 455, 800, and 1200. <clears throat> These are used for what's called down imaging and side imaging. And that technology was originally invented by Humminbird, and that's probably why they still have the best side imaging right now, side imaging technology. But the other companies, Lawrence and uh, Garmin, they've also come out with down imaging and side imaging. They just call it something different. They call them down scan and structure scan, and Garmin calls it down view and side view. I probably spelled that wrong. Yeah, it's VU, not actual view. And then if you take those frequencies, you do something fancy with it, and you shoot it to the side or you spin it around, you get 360 mega, pan optics live scope, active target. These are probably the three hottest topics right now, but these are also the three most expensive 
items you can get. Because if you want one of these, you have to go buy a fish finder first. It might be a $1,500 to $2,000 fish finder, and then you tackle another $1,000 to $1,500 worth of sensors, and then you'll get something that looks really cool. But for the most part, that this area we're not going to deal with today. That's going to be maybe part five or six or seven. There's someone way down the road. This is where it gets really exciting, and as a tournament angler or as a big and weekend angler, or big enthusiast, you want to get to at least this that this right here. If you're a tournament angler, you might want this. I mean, if you're a tournament angler and you're you're fishing for big money, that's probably what you want. As a weekend angler, you may may not want that. It doesn't really matter. All right. But today we're talking to the guys that are looking into this. So that's ultrasonics. But every fish finder has some type of a transducer that emits one of these. Another very important aspect of a fish finder is its G GPS capabilities. So GPS is really used just like like if you're going to be using uh, your car or your phone to navigate somewhere. GPS allows you to get waypoints and if you have mapping it puts you on top of a map that shows you where you are on the lake. It helps you say stay on top of the channels or bluff walls or flats or try to avoid stumps and even drops breadcrumb trails so so if you go out at night and you don't know where you're at and you need to make your way back GPS and mapping go side and side well hand in hand actually but mapping mapping is another feature you have to buy mapping is uh, a lot of units come with built-in maps but it's very very limited so more than likely if you're looking into the world of mapping already you're gonna go buy another SD card is what it is and you'll plug it in your units will read the maps and it'll bring it up and it'll say hey look here's your lake you're on the lake and this is how the lake looks like if it was if there was no water in it you know so you'll see contour changes topo it's basically topographic maps um, and you can you know quickly break down a lake based on how it looks and based off your species of fish, you're trying to target this map. Maybe worth its weight in gold. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking with. We're, this video, we're going to be strictly focused on uh, units that are less than 200 bucks, or maybe right around 250 if 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 it's got mapping and GPS on it. But for the most part, we're going to be talking about units and how to use them and what 2D technology is. So in the in the video description, we're going to link out to uh, at least one unit from one of the three brands. Uh, well, actually, what we should, we should do is uh, we'll have one unit for every brand that we would recommend. So we'll have one for Hummerbird, we'll have one from uh, Lawrence, and we'll have one from Garmin. Under 200 bucks that we would deem pretty good. So if you're going to buy a unit that's under 200, these are the expectations you uh, you should get out of it. Uh, good 2D sonar and water temperature. And that's about it. You might have a, a bigger screen, you might have a four or five inch screen, it might be color, but that's as far as that goes. You're not going to get any of this, you're probably not going to get GPS, or you're probably not going to get mapping. But for the purpose of this fish finder, it's mainly for, say, you're fishing ponds or you're fishing areas that you're pretty, you're pretty sure what's under the surface already. Or heck, if you're fishing rivers and you just need to make sure, you know, it's not too shallow when you're running, that, that's, that's perfect for this, okay? And that's about it, that's all you want. So let me redraw this and we'll come back and we'll explain 2D sonar. Alright guys, in the next couple minutes we're going to be uh, discussing beams, cones, colors, and what you see on the screen. So before we do that, be sure to sub to the channel if you haven't already, because you don't want to miss all the other things that are coming down the pipeline. Uh, we're going to be talking about advanced things and other, like say 2D sonar, advanced uh, mapping, GPS, and everything else so that you can get uh, the most out of the fish finder you're going to buy. So with this, uh, the next few minutes I want to I wanna teach you guys what I know about 2D sonar. And you, 2D sonar, once you know this, these, this correlation between what you see, you know, actually what you see here and what's actually happened in real life, you can go pretty far. Uh, without buying any of the other technologies because if you think about it 
2D Solar has been around since the 70s. And up until maybe the late 90s, new technologies came out. So this was, this was good for about, you know, 25 years. So let's try to understand what we're dealing with. So 2D sonar is a cone that goes down. You have a, a lower frequency, 83, and you have a high frequency of 200. Based on which unit you buy, you need to look the specs up, but they'll, you're going to have a, a frequency that's lower and a frequency that's higher. Like I said, these are just kind of normal categories. You might have a 157 and you might have an 85 or 8990. All it is is the higher the frequency, the tighter the beam. That's all it is, right? So you might get one or two. You might you might be getting lucky and you get one with both. One that can do both at the same time. But regardless, there is a color palette that I have going here that will be drawn over here. So the ultrasonic hits whatever it needs to hit. It hits the ground. It hits anything in between. And it will draw it over here. But I drew this ground as purple because I wanted to say this is mud. But the, the screen doesn't know it's mud. It just knows everything based off reflection strength. Okay, so mud tends to be pretty soft. It even absorbs the ultrasonic. So if you look at the color the color palette, uh, it'll be kind of like this. Okay, so you got green, uh, orange, and red. Red being the hardest, best reflection, and that's a bad or soft reflection. So mud is going to be soft, so it'll be green. So if you're going to look at mud on your screen, oh, one more thing about the screen, you need to know how the screen works. So the screen, the very top is always zero. This is the this is where your sensor is at, or the surface of the water. And the bottom is usually a little bit off the screen because it needs to draw the bottom off the screen. And on the right side, on this side, is currently what's happening. And as time passes, whatever is here gets shifted over. So if you get a fish that comes up here, couple seconds later that fish will be over here so it's scrolled out and depending on how fast your chart speed or scroll speed is will determine how long objects are on the screen so for the most part you know if you have a 1 to 10 uh, setting most manufacturers will ship it out with a 5 so it's kind of the best out of both worlds but if you know what you're doing you might want to adjust that way up or way low depending on what you want to do but regardless Whatever happens over here has to show up on this edge first. Okay, so let's uh, let's just say for the example of this one, right? You're you're looking at mud the whole time, so mud's gonna be green. So low reflection is green. So there's your bottom. Okay, and typically a lot of times you get a reading, uh, some type of a depth reading. So the 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 two D sonar units always give you a depth and a temperature reading. So a lot of times they'll do something like this. It is 25 feet and 59.6 degrees. Okay, so that, that's that's fairly, these two are fairly standard on all fish finders. On the real advanced one, you can choose to hide it, okay? But typically that's what it does. And then typically you'll have some type of a scale. You know, maybe that's five. Maybe that's 10, 15, I don't know, I didn't draw it right, but you guys get what I'm saying. There's usually a scale of some kind. So if we're going to do that again, that might be 8, 16, and uh, say 24. So that would be 25, right? It might be something like that. It might look something like that. But like I said, it's scrolling this way, right to left. So, so if there's nothing going on, that's that's all you're going to see all day. Unless if you're moving around, bottom might change up and down. As this changes, that will change. You'll get like a little ramp or a little drop. And the screen can always change scales as well. Okay. Uh, but for here, we're here to we're here to learn how to find fish. So you're going to be moving around. You, say this is your boat. It's always moving around. And you're going to see fish. So... I'm going to draw a fish. So, so say you're moving around and you spot a fish. That's right here. 
So he starts up right here, and then he ends up over here. Right? So your fish didn't move. So the fish didn't move, but your boat's moving. So the fish stays still, and your boat came over it. All right? How is that going to look over here? I think that's the major question, right? So if you look at a fish, you're going to look, and you're going to see a fish. Ultrasonics doesn't see the actual fish. At least in 2D, it doesn't. When we get to the advanced technologies, it will. But currently, 2D does not. 2D sees a fish like a blimp, okay? So when you when you when it starts coming over this fish, it's going to see the well actually it doesn't really care but it'll see something like this. You'll see like the nose or the tail first and it's a small reflection. Small reflection's always green. And then it'll go to something closer to the where the to the tail or now it's the head something orange and then the actual uh, air bladder itself it'll be kind of red and then it'll be orange again and then it'll be green for the most part, that's what you're going to see, or some combination of that. This is just very, very simplified, okay? But that's what a fish looks like. If the fish is not moving up or down, it's just sitting put, and your boat goes over it. You'll see something like that, okay? If the fish is real active, and he's going up and down, you might see the green go up, turn into orange, turn into red, turn into orange, turn back to green. But it'll be something like that. The other thing we can do is we can actually have a whole bunch of fish and you'll see a whole bunch of these okay but that's still basically one fish multiplied a lot so if you're looking for hybrids you're looking for stripers you're looking for some type of big schooling fish that's what you're going to see but at the same time that kind of tells you that's a that's a good sized fish right anything 12 inches and over will give you a hard reflection or a bright reflection in this case so you'll see red but if you're looking for shad, shad, shad might just be a whole bunch of like green dots. You know, a bunch of like these things. No, they're not really dots, but they're more like, like little arches, you know, like this. You won't get an orange or a red in there. But if you see something like that on TV, that's probably shad, okay? But if you see something like off the bottom, and it's a whole bunch of these, a bunch of yellows. That might be bluegill crappy, you know, the pan size fish. So that's the difference that you can distinguish about what kind of fishes these are, the size of the fishes. Now, the other thing you can do, besides just looking at fish, is you can look at what's on the ground. So like I said before, this is mud, and it's going to draw up green. What if you have a rock? So let me draw you a rock. Let's put the rock just right here. And it's a it's a big rock. It's a boulder. Okay? So when you go over that, see that's the last thing you go over? It's going to be a very hard return. A very hard return. You'll see it as red. Okay? And that's typically what you're going to see. Based off of this, you could do a lot with this. Okay? So you could look for schooling fish, you can look for small fish, you can look for bait fish. At the same time, you know, if you had a tree, you know, say say there's a tree over here now. Lay down with limbs, right? For the most part, that's gonna show up green and yellow. So now you're going to see something that looks like, I mean, 2D, this is where all the new technology takes over, but you can still tell. You're going to get a lot of these, like, arches that do this. And these are all the reflections. It'll look something like this. All right? Something like that, which does not look like a fish. It's too big to be a fish, so it's got to be something. So it's probably a brush pile okay so 
that's pretty much it for 2D uh, Sonar for right now. If you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, be sure to sub to the channel. Uh, part 2, 2D Advanced Topics will probably drop in another week, so be sure to look out for that. Um, if you have any questions on this, let me know. I'm pretty sure I missed something, but no, I gave away a lot of the basics. And if you understand this, you are ready to go to part two. If you don't, be sure you understand this because all these little things uh, here we're going to use later, especially in advanced sonar. So we have a wide beam and a tight beam. There's a reason why there's two of them. We'll cover that later. All right, guys. So once again, it's Connor from Out of Work. See you on the next one.